So welcome to another session on the master jig for a longer ray 5 laser. Now don't turn off if you haven't got a longer ray. This will just give you an idea if you've got a different type of laser on how to create your own jig. So basically what we're looking at here is the frame of the laser and we have four, well three metal feet plus the screen module which has a big back plate which creates its own leg. So what we've got is this strap, which I call the, the base uh, with the teeth. This top part here is purely just to give it some strength and uh, helps to align the jig when we put in a part like this across the middle, which you'll see in the video to keep it nice and straight. All these parts are made of three mil, but you can make them of any thickness you want. Four mil would be perfectly fine. So basically you've got this, these two parts which um, join together underneath this plate. That plate just glues on top to give it some strength. Then we've got two parts that capture the legs. One part here and one part there. And that traps the frame um, in the jig. We also have feet at the back. So we also have locking feet at the back and they just sit on your spoil board and you can screw through here if you want to fix them so then we've got the honeycomb locking legs which is this part here in blue then we have a stack of spacers which we cover and although i show three here i'm only going to recommend two and actually when in my glue up videos i have four but i find that's too high because when I come to do the gadget which I'm calling the smooth lifter which is a gadget which will move the focus up and down nicely I need extra height so two spaces is good enough which will actually give you a nine mil clearance from the bottom of the honeycomb to the bottom or, or to the top of your spoil board which is which is plenty so I show you in the video how we glue these up so you don't have to glue them up 100% accurate. The main component is this last locking piece here which once this is all assembled and we position the honeycomb in its right position then we glue this top green section in that let the glue go off for half an hour and then that is the honeycomb locked in its position. So that's locking in the honeycomb. So once a honeycomb is locked in position, we can then reference our parts from here because the frame of the honeycomb sticks above the honeycomb material, which is normally here, which I'm not showing because my graphics card really doesn't like it. Hello, this is Andy from the future. So now you've got your honeycomb bed square with a laser. What that allows you to do is when you place material on the honeycomb bed, you know that it's square to the laser frame. And as in most files that we cut, if you come in two millimeters from the edge, that should give you two millimeters spare around your piece of material you just placed on your honeycomb bed. So it's a very easy way just to make sure your material is square on your honeycomb bed. If you're not using the uh, honeycomb, you take it off, you lift out, you lift out this part here, and then you can put another jig in here, which will be covered in part two of the video, because the video will be quite long, showing you how to do it, and especially showing you how to get everything nice and square sounds complicated but it's really not just follow along the video i recommend you watch the video through its entirety and then go and build yours let's say it is very easy say this is the honeycomb setup if you want to burn say a tile which you're just engraving you would take this bit out with the stack of spaces the honeycomb bed would be out then you just make another jig to fit in here which would hold say a 100 by 100 tile or a round coaster or slate coaster or whatever you want to do but the main part of the jig is getting this part right and getting here is getting the honeycomb 
square with your frame of your laser and if you haven't built your laser perfectly square go and watch my long video of where I insert tin foil into these gaps here between the vertical and the horizontal profiles to get the frame square because if you haven't got a frame square and you start making parts that need to interlock to one another you may find a high probability that they won't lock together and if you're cutting a square or a circle that square or circle won't be perfectly square rectangular or circular anyway that's the very basics of it um, I hope you enjoy the glue up video it is video, video number one of a two part I'm going to show you how to get the honeycomb in position and then I'm going to show you how to make your jigs to fit in here anyway let's go on to cutting some parts and getting it glued up. So for this next video, I need to take my perfectly good working laser apart to put my standard legs on. At the moment, I've got my thin legs on, which give me clearance under the screen here to pull the matrix out when I need to get it out for cleaning I can also load my work here from under there but for the jig I need to put it back to standard so I'll see you in half hour or so. So here we are again towards the end of the burn of the master jig. I hopefully this is the last revision. I've designed it in such a way that in if your honeycomb bed for example is slightly different size to mine it's easy to glue the parts up to make it fit so we glue the brackets up so i put on the base one and four risers now don't worry, like this one, you can see this one's not quite square. It's leaning down this way. If I tilt it up, you can see it's not square. So that doesn't matter because what we're going to do, once these have gone off, we're going to put this in the jig and then we're going to stick the last piece on in position and that will make sure that the uh, honeycomb is parallel to where we want it if we actually put the last piece on now if these like my, this one is not perfectly square because it slipped when it was in the clamps um it wouldn't be tr sitting true on the honeycomb so the way we're going to glue this up going to put a bit of glue on these faces push that into there then put the uh, straight jig on there and that's going to get this face parallel and then and then we're going to glue the nameplate on and that's going to keep the jig in a straight line if you've got a long straight edge like a long ruler you can run it along this edge as well that will assist you to gluing up but one of the main reasons for making this is to help you with this process although this jig um, as long as I've cut it the right size, again, I, I, I will make sure it's the right size in the files. Um, it will align things in the honeycomb for you. So that's how I'm going to do it. So I'll show you it once it's completed. And you will find that this section is slightly thinner than the width of the bracket to make sure you don't get any glue or squeeze out going down the joints, but make sure you've that like I'm using the aluminium plate under the honeycomb here just to show you this. Make sure you've got no glue under there. Um, otherwise you'll be stuck. Um, and that's it. So let's move on to the next stage. So these are the parts you should have now. You should have the corner braces. You've got the top bits to put on in a minute. You've got the locking legs and you've got the rear legs and obviously the um, comb itself is just still under a bit of weight gluing. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to put these on there and get the laser secured. So now what we're going to do, we're going to glue the left part on here. And we're going to glue the right part on there. And before the glue sets, so once I've applied the glue, I'm then going to lift up the laser and rest the legs in there. So let's clear the decks a little bit. So I'm just going to glue this up and then I'll be with you. So I've literally just put the glue on. And then I've lifted the laser up. I've dropped the legs down the hole that side and that side. And now you just make sure that the top bracket here is pushed into the right. And this bracket is pushed into the left. The brackets should near enough line up with the front face. The front face and the side. But that's really not important. The thing is, is to get a nice tight fit on the legs. So once you're happy, lift it up again. Wipe off any glue. Otherwise you'll be gluing your new jig to your uh, spoil board which you don't want and then you can put a, a little bit of weight on there give it 10-15 minutes for the glue to go off then we can get on to the next stage and just while the glue's going off just put the center brace piece in and they keep everything nice and straight for you so this is what it should look like now you've got the corner braces in so there's a little lip here but that doesn't matter it's just the way it wants to sit. Maybe this leg is not perfectly straight. You can, if it's a very, very tight fit, left and right, you can undo these bolts because you have got about one and a half millimetre tolerance on these bolts to move the leg backwards and forwards. And this side is just looking good. So this front screw hole is intended for you to be able to screw the leg into the spoil board so you, you can make sure you've got no glue in there and that should be lined up but if it's slightly out of alignment you can just run a drill bit through that anyway same with these these are slightly out because I could have pre I could I think I'll undo these now just undoing my legs and I'm just going to push the leg out slightly and then do it back up. And that's giving me slightly better alignment into these drill holes there. They're not perfect, but you can always say just put a drill through that and open up. This one's almost perfect. You only need one screw there one screw here and maybe well one there and maybe one there just to keep the jig from moving so here we have the master jig taking shape and i'm doing the rear legs at the moment the front section is already in but not completely glued up so the rear sections are just going to go on top of one another like that the first two holes are just for locating. If you've got a, a uh, drill bit or something you can poke through there, it just helps you line the parts up. But in this part, it's not essential that they're not square. So that's going to um, trap on the, the rear legs. So as you're gluing them up, when you put the final piece on, just make sure they're handed. So when they fit behind the honeycomb, they're actually going to do their job. And those two parts that, that don't really matter you, could, you can't get them around the wrong way other than sticking this on the, in the wrong hole so uh, the two back holes are, are there to allow you to screw it to your spoil board if you need to let's go and get these fitted there you go with the back feet they just literally drop under the feet the feet still have the little foam pads on so you can leave them on and the holes go to the rear so you can screw, if you so wish, the legs to the spoil board. So here I am gluing up the rear support for the honeycomb bed. 
I find it easier to do the four spaces. Now I've chose to use four spaces. You may only want to use three or two. So once that's gone off, I'm going to glue it to the bottom section. Keeping that the, these two holes would be used to screw this leg assembly to your spoiler board. And then once that's on, I will uh, glue the top bit on. Now this assembly is not... Well, it's not essential to get it square, perfectly level, perfectly looking nice because when we've got the front locking um, mechanism in, these will be positioned on the back of the matrix and you'll move these around just to butt up to your matrix because your matrix is going to sit in this part and then you can screw it or glue it to your spoil board. So, yeah, these aren't critical. Um, the only critical ones are the ones that lock into the front row of teeth. So uh, we'll cover that shortly. So here we go. This is the rear leg assembly for the honeycomb. This is the bottom section. And then that is the top section. So in a minute, I'm just going to run a straight edge around here. A small uh, screwdriver in actual fact, just to get that glue out, just to make it look a bit prettier. Now I'm just going to glue the second one up and then go and get them fitted here we're looking at the underside of the front locking mechanism for the honeycomb bed and all i'm going to do is glue that bit onto there and it doesn't matter if it's not a hundred percent square and it's looking a bit messy because once we've finished that's going to be turned over and that's going to be sitting somewhere like that and then once we get it in the matrix, the critical part is gluing this, this section on. So just get it glued up and I'll see you at the laser. The way these work is you should have the honeycomb locking mechanism. And that's going to go in. That's going to go in the end. And that one's going to go in that end. Okay, so what happens now is the, the protection plate going to take out the locking mechanism because we don't need the center going to need two hands for that i think no there it goes so now you'll find i just concentrate on this side that the metal plate slides all the way down and it butts up against the uh, bottom of the mechanism plate so that was what was wrong on my last design and that's why I burnt my spoil board. So you're going to have the rear legs here and we're going to put them just outside of the laser because we're going to have to stand the honeycomb now somewhere just resting on the top, resting on the top. And then we can slide these uh, rear legs under the back of the honeycomb. So I've got a, an Omtech I'm going to have to probably press that all the way back. Very difficult doing it one-handed. So, as you can see, the mate, the honeycomb, I keep calling it matrix. If you hear the word matrix, I'm, I mean honeycomb. That's roughly sitting on there. That's roughly sitting on there. And now we're going to insert the rear legs. So I'm just going to have to lift it up lifting it up two hands so i've lifted up slid that under there gonna lift this side up gonna lift this side up slide that under there and square up the honeycomb roughly so i've got my rear legs under and my honeycomb is roughly square with the front of the frame. So I'm looking down here, down at that place, and it's roughly parallel. Because now what we've got to do, we've got to use any of these. So they're different sizes because it allows you to have a little bit of adjustment. Now these holes, these are not going to probably line up with the holes here because these holes if you remember were just put in those pieces of wood 
to help you align them when you was gluing them up. Now, what we want to do is glue any of these on top of this top uh, plate. So this, this, this arrangement here, and that will lock the matrix in position. So I'm going to have to put my laser module on my uh on my gantry because i haven't if you haven't seen this video that's the smooth slider got rid of those two stupid uh th three mil screws at the back i haven't published a video here yet but yeah that's that's another video so let me go and get my laser and i'll be back so it's now so easy to install my laser i can probably do it one-handed so let's see if i can hold the camera with my left hand i'm going to stand that in there going to screw in my bolts so you can service your laser in record time using what i'm calling the smooth slider and getting rid of those terrible thumb screws um, so what it does it makes you clean your laser lens more often than you probably would oh you can't see what i'm doing I'm just going to undo that, do that up, and on the bottom there is my 3D printed nozzle with removable tips, so I'm just going to slide that back in. Anyway, let's get back to positioning the laser honeycomb on the supports which are now trapped in the laser legs. So I need to plug my laser in. That's done, that's in, and that's in. So I'm going to slowly, slowly move the laser to its home position. I don't have limit switches. Don't think they're really needed as long as you know how to use your laser and coordinate systems. Now, I think, looking at that, my honeycomb has slipped up. So I'm just going to tap that down, making sure the legs in the back are in. They also have a cutout underneath here for the metal plate to fit. Right, so now I'm going to need my glasses, my safety glasses, and a piece of wood with a square edge. Any piece of wood with a square edge will do. So I'm going to put that <clears throat> in the corner I'm going to turn the laser on at 3% and I'm going to manually jog the honeycomb bed backwards and forwards until the spot of the laser is just on the corner of that piece of wood so I've got my glasses on turning on home the laser by manually moving it manually moving it. I must emphasize you have to do that slowly now on the control panel adjustment three percent and you can probably see there the spot it looks big to you the spot but for me it looks small that needs to go up well about eight mil so i'm moving it up making sure the wood is there and that is probably laser's gone off now turn it off turn it back on that is probably where it needs to be so looking down I have a very small gap between this frame and that frame now it's not square this side so I'm just going to inch that up very very slightly checking this one again that's needs to come across laser's gone off again so just press off and then on i think i need to come across to the left so i get the full beam on the piece of wood so i think that's it and just coming down slightly so now i'm going to manually move the laser's head over to the right very slowly you can see this is real time. Don't really want to do it any quicker. 
then put a piece of wood in there put the laser on and I'm way off there so it needs to come down and what this is telling me because the spot now is on the aluminium I've got more than 400 mil travel so I'm just going to turn it off turn it on you can probably see that the spot is on the aluminium not on the wood so I'm gonna just move that back this side put my wood there because this is the critical part of the whole locking in of the laser so what I'm going to do that laser spot is fully on the wood so I'm going to turn the laser off go back go to control set zero okay and then I'm going to move we're moving at 10 mil so if I keep pressing eventually it will get to 400 it doesn't tell you on this screen where it is but I'm just keep tapping you can see the laser head is moving and eventually you'll see it get near the stop it will get near here so that's probably about it so I'm going to put my bit of wood there put my glasses back on if we go back now it's telling me it's at 400 so if I do adjustment and 3% you can see the laser is just on the wood so that would be burning the side of the wood but whenever you're doing a frame or a design you would always allow one or two mil in from the edge to make sure you are going to burn so I think that is a good position now I'm going to check why so on so I'm just going to move that down a touch the full spot gets on The laser goes off just press off on your control and then on again I think that's pretty good slowly move it back you may have to do this two or three times now to me that's slightly off so I can go one mil up I think that's good there now I'm looking down here and if you squared up your laser frame like I showed you in my long video, this gap that you can see between the frame here and the honeycomb should be consistent because that's how we uh, um, set up the machine. So I think that is good. I'm going to check it one more time. That's good. And now what you can do, you can turn that off. If you slowly move the laser all the way up, Again, this is real time. This is how fast I move my laser, so not to back voltage any part. That's on the stops now of the laser. Put my piece of wood there, and I think that is off the honeycomb. Yes, see, that spot is well on the aluminium, so I have more than 400 mil of travel. So if I move back back down, slowly, slowly. What I'm going to do before I glue anything, I'm now going to home the head. So that's on the stops. Go back to where it is and you'll notice that it says 400 because I've been manually moving it so I'm going to go back to control set zero and now when we go back wait it didn't take it you 
Right, the box thinks it's at 400, so for whatever reason, when you're moving it manually, the laser still thinks it's at 400, and I can't do that. So if I do that, set zero, and I can't home, it still thinks it's at 400, so I'm gonna have to turn it off. Wait a few seconds turn it on and that would reset that down so that is a the laser I've homed manually and now I'm going to because I believe my laser and my matrix is lined up in the bottom corner to check the laser 400 is roughly the same as the 400 marked on the honeycomb I'm going to move the laser 400 just keep an eye on when you're getting close to the end stop so I'm just checking around here getting close to the end stop a little bit more I think that is 400 so if we now look back on here 400 if I fire the laser now adjustment 3% I am just off I'm just off the honeycomb bed. So this honeycomb bed is not exactly 400 um, cutting area because it's not touching the wood. You can see that's on the black aluminium. And we can confirm that with a decent ruler later. So now if I go back, control and home, it will bring it back to its home position because you set that earlier. Nicely done. And it should say zero, zero. So, just going to fire the laser once more. I think I can go just up a fraction. The laser's just off the screen. So that's good. Now I'm going to slide it this way to make sure I'm parallel. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Put my wood there. And that's, that's off the screen. But I'm going to move that off the piece of wood. I'm going to move that back. And I've got a full spot on the piece of wood. So now I know my honeycomb is trammed. We call it trams. So that means it's running parallel to the straight edge of the, the honeycomb. So now it's very important you do not move the honeycomb bed. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to turn off the laser so we don't need that. Right, so let's take my glasses off so I can see what I'm doing. So now we've got either the thin or the thick to glue on top of this section. So I'm going to offer up the big one first. That would work this side for me. So, as you can see, there is a gap. It's not parallel to the edge of the adjustment brackets at the top. It, you know, that would be there. So, that, that would... Actually, that's back to front. So, the long edge goes at the bottom. And, and remember, the holes don't line up. So I can glue that on there. That will work nicely on that one. And using the fat one on this side. Uh, that's back to front. Now this is overhanging. So I've got two mil overhanging. So that's why I made the thin brackets. Just to keep the edges more on so that would work for there so now what i'm going to do is going to apply some wood glue on here and here put it on leave it a good 15 minutes so it doesn't move and that should now lock the um, honeycomb in position once the glue's dried you're free then to position these at the back and screw these into your spoil board if you so wish but the two at the front should keep it in position. So if you don't want to screw these in using these back screws, um, you don't have to. So let me go and get some wood glue and I'll be back. So as you see, I've put some wood glue on. I've slid that in, making sure you don't move the honeycomb bed. And I'm not going to wipe that glue off now because I want the glue to set slightly because I do not want to move the honeycomb bed. 
So I'll come back in 15 minutes. A good way to check that everything's square with uh, the front rail is if you're looking down here. So I'm looking straight down there and then at the graduations on the honeycomb. If you come back and back and back, they should be parallel. May not come out well in the video, but I'm looking down this straight edge here. Then looking at the graduations where you can see now. So that should be parallel. Otherwise, if you're cutting squares, if this gantry is crooked like here, then if you're cutting squares, they're not going to be squares. Um, and circles may not be circles because this isn't riding. Everything's got to be trammed. It's not. Tramming is making sure things are running parallel. And the most important tramming is the way that the tip of your nozzle is sliding over the work. And we'll cover that in, an, in another video um, to make sure you're getting perfect focus. So I drew the rectangle 2mm and 2mm and now let's see what this actually measures. So measuring the diameter of or, or the width of these cuts it was here is 2.06 1.78 then up the Y is 0.364 and 0.7 sorry 3.74 so that means um what does that mean so that is telling us now what is the minimum we can draw our boxes on our screen so if i draw it 2.2 mil in from the left that is equating to, sorry, if I'm drawing it two mil in from the left, it's equating to nearly four mil. And if I draw it two mil up from the bottom, it is getting narrower. So I need to do a burn test on the right hand side of the laser to see whether this distance gets even smaller. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so now I'm doing a test on the right hand side of the bed to see where the laser cuts. So the laser is in home position. I've loaded in a rectangle to cut two uh, mil inside this rectangle. And I'm keen to see where the line is cut. So computer, extract fan on. So I've put my glasses on. Gonna press, uh, gonna turn on my air assist. And we're gonna cut, go. That's not looking bad at the moment going to be quite close to the right hand edge but that's looking good for me and there it is done so let's go back upstairs with the computer and measure that and see what we've got okay so there's the bottom right hand edge of the rectangle that i drew in light burn and these are the measurements i got so one mil on the right hand side sort of an average of two on the bottom and i was the rectangle was a 120 by 40 and that's that's not right that should be 119 no, no. 119 119.98 and 39.94 which is good enough for government work so that's telling me that I should keep all my work two mil in from the edge of light burn when I'm drawing it. So if I was to go any further, um, 
if I was go to any further to the right, it would really not burn anything. You know, one mil is no tolerance. Having two mil is a good tolerance. It was, uh, where's my other bit? On the left-hand side, it was two and one seven eight. So that's like an average of two along the bottom. On this side, I was getting three. So it does mean that I could, and I'm going to try that now. I am going to try and move the rectangle. I have to make it smaller because every time I'm cutting a rectangle, it's getting smaller. I am going, if I've got nearly four there, I am going to put that rectangle on the, so I'm going to put the rectangle on the edge here and two mil up. So I'm hoping now that when it burns, it will burn roughly one and a half mil inside the inside the rectangle. So I just need to make this rectangle slightly smaller. So if I make it um, 35 by 110, and burn that, that should still burn in my nice piece of wood. And I'm hoping now that this distance from the edge will be one mil, which is perfect because all my references are being taken from zero, zero. So I know that from this, you know, I could almost go down to one mil on the bottom, but that's cutting it fine. Anyway, let's go and burn this and see whether I damage my honeycomb or I actually cut the piece of wood. So here we are now cutting the far left um, rectangle to see how close to the edge we are. That looks like it's, that looks like it's two mil off the edge, that's fine. And that's now about two mil off the edge as well. Oh, that's about two mil off the edge. So that's perfect. So I can go hard up on the left hand side when I'm drawing my designs. And if I keep it two mil um, off the edge at the bottom, that'd be perfect. So this is what it's all about. My master jig seems to be working well. Thanks for making it to the end of my videos. If I've earned your respect and your trust, perhaps you would consider subscribing to my channel. It really does make a massive difference. And maybe you would like to watch some of the videos popping up on the screen now. Let me know what you think. Cheers for now.